Hey guys, Sean with Long Long Honeymoon here. Today we have an incredibly fun topic, our new electric scooter. In this video, I'm going to prove that you can teach an old dog new tricks. Now, I did not grow up scooting. This is my first scooter with this Varla Eagle One. I feel like that kid in high school who gets his first car and it's a Ferrari. An electric scooter, quite simply, is a two-wheeled electric vehicle that's equipped with one or more electric motors and a lithium ion battery on board. This is a self-propelled scooter and it has a travel range of around 40 miles. Now the mileage that you're going to get depends on your weight, it depends on the terrain, it depends on how hard those motors are having to work. So this is a unique electric vehicle. It's not an electric bicycle, it's not a moped, it's not a motorcycle, it's a scooter. It scoots and until recently I had never ridden an electric scooter so I'm going to tell you all about that experience but first let's come in a little closer and I want to show you some unique features of this particular scooter this is a really what they would call a performance scooter a very robust build quality this is made out of an aluminum alloy you can see it has a really large platform upon which you stand. It has a little kick plate at the back. It's got a coiled spring suspension on the front and rear. Not one, but two electric motors, and they are 1,000 watt electric motors. On the rear wheel, there's a 1,000 watt motor, and on the front wheel, there's a 1,000 watt motor. Now, we have recently reviewed some great electric bikes, and they're equipped with one 500 watt electric motor. This has two 1,000 watt electric motors. It's got tremendous power and it can travel at speeds up to 40 miles per hour. Now, I don't think you're gonna see me going 40 miles per hour on a scooter because I'm married. My wife wouldn't let me do that. <laughs> but if you're into performance scooting, this is up to the task. This particular scooter is equipped with 10 inch pneumatic tires and these are actually the street tires. You can optionally equip the scooter with off-road tires that are kind of a knobby, rubber, grippy design and those are designed to really take the scooter anywhere. You see this power in the scooter really helps you get through gravel. Uh, I've had it on grass. But as it's set up right now, it's really ideally ridden on asphalt. Thankfully, with all that power, the scooter also has excellent stopping power in the form of hydraulic disc brakes, front and rear. And they do a great job of stopping the scooter. It's also got safety features like uh, tail lights, brake lights, and headlights that are integrated into the design. In the center, is where the battery resides. And this battery is not removable. It's a huge battery. And this battery, of course, in addition to the aluminum alloy construction means that this is a pretty heavy scooter. This bad boy clocks in at 77 pounds. The Varla Eagle One does fit under our tonneau cover, but the handlebars are making slight contact with the tonneau cover. So it's not really ideal. Now you can, of course, remove the handlebars if you choose by just loosening four little Allen bolts on the top. So you do have that option, but it'd be nice if those handlebars folded. Not that you'll be doing a lot of scooter lifting, but 77 pounds is a lot to lift. But like, it can be done. And you can see all you have to do to set it up is rotate the stem in the vertical orientation and then uh, lock down this clamp. You can see on the front suspension there, when I put my weight down on the scooter, watch how it bounces and absorbs the shock. So you can really travel with this scooter over some rough terrain when you hit bumps in the road or even like skip up onto sidewalks. You can do it with some confidence with this scooter. This scooter is equipped with a flaming skull grip tape, but if you yourself are not in the flaming skull demographic, the company includes some additional grippy tapes, so you can always peel these tapes off and put down a fresh tape. 
and I think we will probably be doing so. But this platform is huge and really gives you a lot of confidence in its gripping power. I mean, look at how well it absorbs the shock. Mm -hmm. I'm six foot two and my weight is rumored to be north of 200 pounds depending upon my recent beer consumption. But supposedly this scooter can handle up to 330 pounds of weight. And again, when we come back to the expected range of the scooter, the company quotes a range of 40 miles off a single battery charge. That's an optimistic number and it really factors in flat terrain and I guess a reasonably sized human being riding around on the scooter and sort of ideal conditions. So this scooter is actually equipped with two charge ports. It comes with one AC adapter, but optionally you could purchase an extra AC adapter and then you could charge it twice as quickly. With one AC adapter, an empty battery will take about nine hours to recharge, but with two, you can recharge the battery in about five hours. So it's up to you whether you want to make that additional upgrade, but it's nice that it's an option. Uh, you can see you've got some nice wide handlebars. Now these handlebars are great uh, in terms of inspiring confidence when you ride, but they do not fold. And even when the stem is folded down, the footprint of the scooter is still fairly large. Yeah. So here we go. 77 pounds. And it does roll, of course. We'll work on that from a storage standpoint. But it's still easier than storing a bike. I can squeeze it underneath the tonneau cover of our truck, but it's a pretty tight squeeze. So it'd be nice if these handlebars would fold. But like I said, they're nice and wide and they come with these great grips from the factory. And you can see up in your upper right, hold down the power button and you can see this nice color display and you can toggle through the different modes. If you hit mode, you can change your gear. There are three gears in the scooter. Dial up the gears and you will increase your sort of top speed that the scooter will go. And here we see the battery voltage currently. And this is a keyed ignition. So the scooter comes with a couple of ignition keys. So you just turn on the ignition, turn on the power, if you hold down the mode button, you will turn on the headlights. Uh, I think if you were going to do any serious nighttime riding, you would probably want to add some additional headlights, but these are pretty effective in terms of increasing your visibility on the road to other travelers. And the brake lights actually will flash when you are applying the brakes, which I think is a really nice feature. Mm -hmm. you see on the back, you've got a little kick plate here, mm -hmm. so you can stand up and put your weight back on the plate if you so desire. Mm -hmm. To the right of the control display is your throttle. It's a simple little lever that you can pull back with your finger and control the speed of acceleration. So you pull back that throttle and the thing's going to take off. The scooter does include a little bell. It's always good to have a bell when you're traveling and you control those hydraulic disc brakes with these little control levers, just like you would see on a bicycle, right and left. Your left controls the rear brake and your right controls the front brake. And on the left of the control bar is a very important pair of buttons. Now for reasons unknown to man, these buttons are not mentioned in the instruction manual of the scooter. So like my suggestion to Varla would be, you might want to mention these buttons because they're pretty important. On the right is the single dual button. So you can toggle between powering one motor or powering two motors. At least that's what I think it does. On the left is the eco turbo button. <laughs> and I think this goes between economy mode and turbo mode. If you really want to dial up the power, you can turn on the turbo with both motors engaged. You do not get any kind of indication on screen from these buttons that I've found, which is a little odd. In other words, there is no light giving you a signal, whether it's depressed or not. So it's pretty hard to tell the difference. So that's 
depressed and that's out. Depressed and out. It's about a half a millimeter difference in depth. <laughs> so you need to have some good eyesight. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. If the buttons are depressed, you'll feel the scooter almost want to pull out from underneath you when you're traveling. You know, it's hauled me up some steep hills around here in this park. Just a while ago, I was going up a pretty steep incline and I blew past a hardworking mountain biker just relaxing riding on my scooter. <laughs> When you first see someone riding an electric scooter, it looks like, well, they're not really working or exercising because they're not pedaling something. But you actually are getting exercise. I would say it's, it's more like doing yoga than lifting weights. So, you know, a bicycle might be lifting weights with a scooter. You're kind of doing some yoga because you're kind of in a ready position and you're contorting and adjusting your body to maintain your balance as you go. So when you're riding an electric scooter for the first time, I think the best advice that I received is to treat it like an old fashioned manual scooter to hop on it and push off manually and then your self-preservation instincts kind of kick in and you find yourself balancing it and then you apply the power. And you can see this thing really wants to take off. <laughs> but it's actually a lot of fun. It's a different experience from riding a bike or moped or motorcycle or what have you. It's a unique experience. You can get from point A to point B very quickly. A lot of people these days are using these things in cities. You may have seen in your own city or nearby rental scooters that are showing up in downtown areas because these scooters are a really fun way to cover a lot of ground quickly. And they're actually quite comfortable to ride. I haven't had any difficulty yet maneuvering the scooter or feeling safe on the scooter. I would suggest that if you're riding one of these things for the first time to find a very safe flat area with minimal traffic and take some time just familiarizing yourself with this experience and getting more comfortable on it. But I can see how over time, as you gain more experience, you can have more and more fun with these things, especially this one because it's got the power to take it off-road into some really different environments if you so desire. Like I could foresee people using these things in Moab, maybe even in, in Quartzsite, you know, just to get from point A to point B or run around through these Bureau of Land Management areas because this one can do it, especially if you equip it with those off-road tires. I thought it was a lot of fun. I mean, I just rode it on streets, so I can't really speak to how it would be on a trail or something like that, but as far as riding it on the street, it was a lot of fun. I think it's pretty easy to ride. If you have any experience riding a scooter at all, it'll, it'll be pretty simple to you. I do think it's a good tip to kind of kick off and get going a little bit before you engage the motor. So I'm gonna wrap up with a few likes and dislikes about the scooter. First of all, I like the overall construction. It's a very robust, build, solid metal. You know, I like this big, wide platform. I love the suspension and the braking and the power, the dual 1000 watt electric motors. And overall, I like this display. I love the fact it's got the integrated headlights and working brake lights. The range is very good. I personally will not be dialing up the power to the 40 mile per hour setting very often. So I think we are likely to get a good 30 to 40 miles of range out of it, which I think is great. Dislikes, I have a few quibbles about, first of all, the instruction manual needs to be better. It's a pretty thin manual and some important pieces of information I think are missing from the manual. Uh, setup was pretty easy. It comes mostly assembled. However, you do need to, of course, raise the stem and then you need to adjust your handlebar and make sure that all of these various bits and pieces are tightened down. So expect to spend a little bit of time doing that. The kickstand is pretty chintzy. <laughs> I think it really needs a more robust kickstand. So that's it guys, a look at the Varla Eagle One, my first scooter. I'm really pleased with it overall. You know, this is something for certain RV travelers. It's not an electric bicycle. It's a different type of vehicle entirely. Maybe with your particular storage requirements or just your personal taste, you'd rather ride around with an electric scooter. 
or have this in your bag of toys. This has been yet another episode of Long Long Honeymoon, the long longest running RV video show on the interwebs, or so they say. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe.